Hi everyone. All right, so I want to do a collective energy. Um, we're going to start with astrology for the week. And so it'll be like uh, the 28th until the 3rd, kind of the 4th, going into the 4th. Because um, I want to talk about the new moon in Aquarius as well, briefly. I'll probably do a separate video all for the new moon, but I, just do, I do want to talk about it briefly and kind of pull it into everything else going on this week. Um, I do have notes in front of me, so if I glance down, that's because there's a lot going on. You guys know that if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I'm going to look at my notes. I need notes. <laughs> I got so much going on up in my brain, I have to write stuff down. A um, couple of things before we start. Um, if you want to get a personal reading from me, I've been asked several times, like people have emailed me or commented on getting personal readings and where to do that. You can go to my website, fearlessintuition.net. All of the information is there. Also, if you are looking for extras, meaning you want extended versions of readings, um, extra twin flame energies that are happening, um, extra meditations and all that stuff, um, I'm going to be building more and more and more on the Patreon platform. Um, you can also get all of those extras on my website or Vimeo as well. Um, I will put links to all of that in the description box below. Um, there is a specific Twin Flame series that I am working on for energies for January and February, um, along with uh, just, you know, and, and on Patreon, you can choose three different options there if you just want to have the extended readings for the month or you want to do Twin Flame extended meditation, extra energies, all of that. There are just different options there. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, so the first part of the week is pretty quiet, but because the, we're kind of leading up into these energies towards the end of the week, and when I say that, it's like this slow progress movement to squaring and conjuncting and sextiles to certain planets. So on Thursday, I'm going to start with Thursday because really the beginning of the week is kind of quiet. We're coming into a time of really asserting your independence and really asserting yourself and, and going in new directions and being a new person and where your place is in the world. And this week is going to be really, really good for that, except there will be some challenges when it comes to how other people view you and how other people are going to accept your um, the way you're gonna put yourself out there. Now, if you watched my post-eclipse reading that I did, um, that there were, there was a lot of contentious, um, comments about, and people did not like what I had to say. And a lot of that is because, um, there, it was viewed that I was being self-important. It was viewed that I was being, um, selfish in a way. And it was kind of like a me, me, me attitude. Now, when I tell stories about my life or how things are affecting me, the reason why I do that is because, and I don't feel like I have to explain myself, but um, because I think most of you know why I, I talk about the experiences that I have in my life. The reason why I do that is because I want you all to know that I am human, that I can relate to you, that that I can, I'm not just empathizing with your situation. I can probably sympathize with it too, because I didn't get here on an easy road. I didn't get to my truth and to my path by taking the easy way out. Um, nothing was ever handed to me in my life. So um, there is no such thing as self-importance to me. I believe that everybody's energy is as important as another person's. I value my boundaries. I value who I am as a person. I value the fact that I have learned how to stand up for myself and speak my truth. And I, in turn, hope that for you as well. The, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is this week's energies are going to bring you to the point with the sextile between Saturn and Neptune. This is only, the, the last time that this happened was in 1996, and it'll happen three times this year. This is all about bringing your material world and the spiritual world together. This is all about um, living up to your own standards and ideals when it comes to what you truly believe in. Um, whatever higher power that is, whatever institution that means for you, whatever it is that makes you go on a regular basis, that brings you faith and hope and trust and love on a regular basis, 
the sextile between Neptune and, and Saturn um, is going to help you really tap in, fit in a very physical way to your spiritual nature. And it's going to bring wisdom and patience and kindness and self-discipline. In the short term, you might have to sacrifice some things in the short term, but it's all for a long-term goal. Like, for example, if you are not living in your truth by working in a place that sucks the life out of you, that, that literally your soul feels like it's dying every single day that you go to the office or you go to the job or whatever you do, right? Um, it's This is going to be brought to light for you. And if you have to sacrifice in a way by recognizing that you can no longer go to a job that's like sucking the life out of you, um, you're going to realize I can't be this person anymore. And you're going to want to go in a different direction. That includes relationships, whether they're romantic or friendships or family members or whatever. If you are in a situation in a very material way that is making you feel like it is like energy draining, energy vampire, narcissistic, like, like all, all of that, right? Um, you're really going to hold yourself to a higher set of standards because your soul is evolving. And if you're really exhausted during this time, um, a lot of times with the soul ascension, that soul evolution, our bodies need time to kind of catch up to it. So allow yourself the time, you know, and, and I talk about meditating a lot. And meditating doesn't have to be like sitting there for an hour and getting in contact with your spirit guides and going to another realm, right? Um, meditation can be taking a bath and just being in, in your quiet space for a while. And even if you have thoughts pop up in your mind, acknowledge what those thoughts are and why they're invading your mind at that moment. And if you can release them or what you need to do to move forward. Meditation can be five minutes of, of sitting at your desk while you're eating lunch and just enjoying the breathing of the air going in and out of your lungs and in and out of your belly and recognizing that you're nourishing your body at that moment. And and allowing yourself to have that quiet moment, that quiet. Meditation is all about getting in touch with you, getting in touch with that, that present moment and not constantly worrying about the future and not constantly worrying about what your next step is in life. Now, the next day on Friday, we have Mars and Pluto squaring, and this can be extremely aggressive. So first of all, I want everybody to be very, very, very careful about driving <laughs> because road and I'm and I'm laughing but it's true it's so true um, road rage can be very heightened during times like this people kind of almost go crazier during a Mars and Pluto square off than they do when there's a full moon um, anger issues can come up people can start projecting onto you especially because Lilith is in Aquarius right now um, there is no, sometimes there's just no way out of it. And the only way that you can really reconcile this kind of energy within your life is to stick to your own business, stay in your own lane, um, whether you're driving or, <laughs> or whether you're it, just in life, like not sticking your nose into other people's business, not being a know-it-all, yada, yada, yada. And I'm actually saying that to myself as well, because being a Virgo, we all know that I can be a know-it-all sometimes. I am not always the smartest person in the room, Yes, I've admitted that. You may, I'm glad this is recorded. Um, <laughs> play it back as much as you want. Betsy admitted that she is not the smartest person in the room all the time. I mean, sometimes I can be. But stay focused on your own story. Stay focused on your own objections in life. Stay focused on what it is that you are trying to accomplish. When people are projecting onto you their anger, their disappointment, their lack of their lack of moving forward, their fears, their because sometimes the fear that they project onto you is really the fear that they and most of the time it's the fear they have within themselves. Vice versa. Try not to project onto other people at this time. Sometimes it can't be helped because you're triggered by a moment, but make sure that with that moment you come back with humility. And you come back with those standards and morals and values that you started off the day, with, you know what I mean? Like, like be a bigger person, be, um, and everybody like tells me, you know, I'm always the bigger person, Betsy. Fantastic. Always be the bigger person. Always humble yourself in the moment and say, you know what, even if that person isn't right and, and you feel like you're right and that person isn't right, there's no need to argue about it. Sometimes all they need is an acknowledgement of, okay, 
We can agree to disagree. That's fine, right? During this Mars-Pluto square off, and these energies can last up to two weeks, um, especially with these outside planets, these slow moving, like Mars is going to move away pretty quickly from Pluto. Um, but with Saturn and Neptune, that's going to be a really good, nice, cozy con uh, sextile for a while. Um, for a little bit, because the, both of them are very slow-moving planets, um, the outside, the big the big players, right? Um, but this Mars energy could last for a couple of days with Pluto. And um, so remember that. There's also a trine with Venus and, and Uranus on Saturday, um, and that's going to actually be really good for social networking, for being with friends, for having a good time. So try not to lose your friendships on Friday because you really want to hang out with people on Saturday, or it's going to be a good day to reconcile right? After you lost your shit and you blew your lid and it's like, oh my God, now I have to reconcile things. Saturday is going to be a really good day for that. And then um, uh, Sunday and um, Monday, um, we have the, we have Mercury, the sun and the new moon all in Aquarius. And this is kind of where I'm going to wrap this up a little, the, the astrology part of this. Um, it's all about new stuff, new, like Aquarius is just, it's the sign of innovation. It's the sign of, of, you know, new things and, and really having a good time and having fun and, and being authentic and, and not going with the crowd and not going with the same thing over and over and over again and kind of saying to hell with what society standards are. I'm going to be my own person. I'm going to do me. Um, Check the ego at the door, right? Let's let's remember, especially with this Mars and Pluto stuff, check the ego at the door. You're not always the smartest person in the room, but don't hold yourself back. If you have new ideas in your life, if you have new creative beginnings that you want to do, now is the time to really start that. And um, maybe even with the new moon energy, I'll talk about doing like a new moon ritual thing because it's a very good manifestation time to bring new beginnings into your life. You know, sometimes when we have new moons, um, like the, I remember the Libra new moon that we had back during Libra season, it was more about endings than beginnings. But this one is definitely that push forward to really start new projects and do it in your own way. Do it in a very authentic, you know, I, I've been talking about how 2019 is about allowing yourself to live authentically and loving yourself completely. Um, allow authenticity and love. Those are the three big words for 2019 for me. And I'm going to be preaching that over and over and over again, because it's time to step out of the box. It's time to be your own person. You don't want to continue um, being the follower when you have that leader energy. And I know a lot of you out there have that leader energy and you've just kind of held yourself back. I was one of those people for a very long time that helped. I, I lived in the shadows. I was everybody else's cheerleader. And um, a couple, you know, several years ago when I decided to not be everybody's cheerleader anymore and be my own cheer, cheerleader, um, things really started to change for me. So this is a big time for people to be the leaders and no longer the followers. And, and it's not even bad to be a follower. Sometimes you can follow, um, you know, if you have found that certain group that you want to be with or that certain niche that you want to be in. And you're like, yeah, I like being the cheerleader. I'm the better, I'm better at being the cheerleader than I am at being the leader. That's a good thing. It's not always bad to be part of a group. It's not. Um, and Aquarius is urging you to be independent within that group, if you will. Okay? All right. So let's look at the cards. Mike, what do I do with this? Where do I go? I got to take a drink of water. Mmm. I will be doing another pop-up live reading um, where I um, do $30 for one question readings on Wednesday evening. I haven't decided the time yet, though. Um, it'll probably be around 6 p.m. Central Time, so 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, so, uh, yeah, and because I there were so many people on the last one that, like, wanted to get a question in and they weren't able to because I only I limited it to 10, um, the first 10 questions. So if you want to be a part of that, I will be doing a pop-up live on Wednesday evening, and um, that's all. It was so fun. It was so fun to do the last one. I love doing it, and um, I have actually already had several people email me 
and say, oh my gosh, you're never going to guess what happened this week after that pop-up live question. So it was pretty cool. Um, I like getting feedback like that. It's fun. All right. So the energies this week. Well, that is, oh, that is right along with what I was saying. So the first one is confront. This is the moon in the traditional tarot. And we have win or lose, which is the five of swords. Both of these are about honesty. Both of these are about, um, conf you know, the five of swords can be about confrontation. And, um, and a lot of it can be confrontation in your own mind, lying to yourself, telling yourself that you're not good enough, that you can't do this, that you can't do that. Um, confront the moon energy is literally he's looking at himself in a mirror, right? And he's seeing his shadow side. So it's being really honest about uh, how you truly see yourself. And, and not how other, you know, sometimes it, it's good how other people see you when they know you, when it's authentic, when they're authentically part of your soul family, and they can look at you and be like, you know what, you're being an asshole today, and I'm just going to put it out there and let you know. Like, that's okay. Um, but some people in your life don't truly know who you are, and they try to project that that onto you and say, no, you're supposed to be this person. Um it's actually like uh, I was having a conversation with somebody who's, and he said, um, uh, some people think that they have to fix you when you're not even broken. And it, that's so true. It's like, I am my own person. I am whole by my, I am healing on my own. I, I am imperfectly perfect. I am perfectly imperfect, right? So um, allow yourself to, to, to live within your authentic truth this week. Um, but don't do it so much where that ego gets involved and you end up like arguing and fighting with other people. If other people want to pick fights with you, take a step back and be like, is this worth my time and energy? Is this really something that I want to be involved in right now? Because, um, you don't want to, um, ruffle feathers where you don't, you know, you don't need to ruffle feathers and you don't need to, um, get into quarrels or arguments or anything like that unnecessarily. Like, that's just a waste of time and energy. Who would do that? I mean, that's my Virgo talking. Like, who wants to waste time and energy? There's far too many things in this world that are way more important than arguments or fighting with somebody else to waste your time and energy. So, all right, cool. Seven of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune. Some of you have been waiting for something for a while to manifest. And I feel like the the, the energy is going to shift for you this week. And I feel like it's, it's happening in... Um, kind of like an out of the blue sort of thing. The Wheel of Fortune is Jupiterian energy. You know, Jupiter's in Sagittarius right now. Um, there's a lot, I feel like there's a lot on the line for some of you. I feel like with the Seven of Pentacles, you guys have manifested some things. You're planting some seeds. And now you're kind of waiting for your return on your investment. And I feel like some of you are going to get that return on your investment. I feel like there's going to be this, this huge shift of energy where you're going to start seeing some progress where you weren't seeing progress before. Now, if you do feel like you're still kind of waiting on things to happen, I feel like some of you can actually shift the energy yourself by going the extra mile, by making a little bit of effort, whether this is in relationships, whether this is in jobs, by making decisions. And some of you actually need to physically move with the two of wands or start thinking about it. The two of wands, if you look at that card, he has the world in his hands. Some of you have so many opportunities to look at right now and you have to choose one. And the only way that that energy is gonna shift, the stagnant energy that you've been waiting on, patiently, patiently waiting, because you've been manifesting this, the only way for this energy to shift is if you are the one that makes a decision to move. And maybe it's that you don't have something that prompts you to do it. You just have to decide to go in a direction and allow that energy shift to happen. Whether you know what's on the other side of the door or not, you're going to knock on it. You're going to make the decision to shift the energy this week. Um, and I feel like some of you have been kind of waiting for a sign or waiting for something to happen when now it's time to take your foot off the brakes and just go and just start moving in a direction. So then we have the hermit. Something just popped up. That was weird. Something like popped up. 
I don't know what that was. On my it like popped up and then went down. It was very strange. I don't even know what it was. Anyway, um, so then we have the hermit. And if you're not entirely sure what direction you're going in, get quiet. I feel like within meditation, within silence, some of you could be dealing with some earth energy, um, especially with the seven of pentacles. But I feel like um, the hermit energy can give you, I it can give you the answer, like getting quiet, getting you know maybe being analytical, maybe making a pros and cons list of what direction you know what I mean. Like let's get let's get like super Virgo here. That's what the hermit represents is the Virgo. Um, there is a uh, a need to listen to your inner guide this week for a decision that you need to make in order to shift your life. And again, this could be in relationships. This could be in other areas of your life. And then we have the King of Wands and we have the Five of Cups. So the King of Wands is somebody who is confident. The King of Wands is somebody who knows what he wants and he goes for it. He's very fair. He's very honest. He puts himself out there and it doesn't matter what comes back. I feel like some of you are putting yourself out there. And um, I feel like the Five of Cups energy is more towards the end of the week. It's like some kind of disappointment happens when you become confident. And when you put yourself out there, you recognize that there are some things or some people. It's in a very emotional moment for, for some of you where you're going to recognize that some people aren't always going to be in your corner and you have to leave those people behind, that you can no longer um, sit and wait patiently for other people to agree with you. Not everybody's going to agree with what you're going to say or what direction you're going to go in, especially if you're asserting yourself as a King of Wands would. Now, and I'm saying the King of Wands is honest and fair and um, he is somebody that know, is very confident and knows what he wants in life. And, and he's going to go for it. But the thing is, is he still has a heart, right? He, he it represents Leo, the fixed sign of Leo. And Leos have huge hearts. But they're also very confident and they're unwavering in their decisions. So I feel like some of you are making decisions to move forward in a direction. And it's really going to ruffle some feathers. And, and it's okay to be upset about it. It's okay to have those feelings and acknowledge the sadness of having to lose certain situations or certain or certain people or relationships or something is going to have to fall by the wayside. Um, acknowledge that, right? But also know with these two cups that are still standing that all's not lost. And you can't sit in the five of cups energy for long. And I don't feel like you do, but um, I do feel like some of you are kind of like, this is like that fear that's kind of been holding you back the fear of, but what if it doesn't work out? But what if it this? But what if it that? You know, like, what if it's not what I expected it to be? Y yeah. What if it does work out? What if it's amazing? What if you don't lose as much as you thought you were going to? Because a lot of times when you're living your authentic truth and you're moving on your own path and you're being very confident about what you want to do and where you're going in life, um, yes, you lose some people, places, and things, but you gain so much more on the other side because those people and places and things aren't aligning with you anymore. You know? It's a harsh reality to live that, to live in that. It's a very harsh reality to live in that. So let's see, what is the, I'm drinking water, by the way. Like if anybody's wondering, um, because I, uh, need to what you know, like my core bottle, I always refill it and I need to wash it. And so I was like, oh, I haven't used this cup in a long time or this, um, water bottle in a long time. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I'm, I'm drinking water. I mean, even if I wasn't drinking anything else. Okay. So seven of pentacles on the lovers. Um, and I think we kind of got this energy last week too which is really interesting. But so some of you are waiting on a relationship to show up, kind of like what I said, like you need to be the one that makes the decision to shift the energy or you need to go in the direction of a certain connection or relationship. It's like you need to stop waiting for it to evolve or waiting for it to happen. 
you've already planted the seeds and you've been patiently waiting for it. And now it's like something needs to happen this particular week in order to shift the energy, in order to, um, in order for you to make that decision on, on what direction to go in. Um, and again, I feel like some of you are actually like physically going in a direction. And yeah, I mean, you have to realize that if you are waiting on something to manifest, still sitting within your own right of autonomy and abundance is huge. And maybe that's the energy, energy shift that you need to have um, to realize that your abundance is, is to I mean, the lovers is also about making a decision. It's not always about a relationship. The lovers is about making a decision um, because it's ruled by Mercury. And it's also about communicating. Um, and sometimes it can be about loss. So, but with the Nine of Pentacles, this looks like an extremely good reading so far. You know, is, it, even the Five of Cups isn't all that bad, right? So the Nine of Pentacles on the Wheel of Fortune is um, you even just standing up for yourself and being abundant on your own. Because the Nine of Pentacles is like, it represents the Venus and Virgo. It represents independence. It represents being... Um, abundant in, within your own right, you know, and we all have the right to abundance. Nobody is in this world to be, you know, to, to be in like a woe is me attitude. We all have the right to be happy and abundant with life. That is our God given right. And um, when I feel like when some of you recognize and realize that this is your God given right to be abundant on your own, that's when the energy shifts and that's when everything you've been manifesting starts to show up because you make that decision to go off on your own, to do what you need to do, to travel, to um, actually move, or just making decisions within your own environment to change things. So let's see what the two, ooh, two of wands. Okay, so some of you are traveling to a queen of cups. Or some of you have to make a decision using your intuition. Um, and it doesn't have to be a queen. Of, it doesn't have to be a water sign. The queen of cups is somebody who is extremely intuitive, very caring. Um, she's much like the high priestess, but she's a little bit more vocal than the high priestess. She can vocalize her emotions a lot better than the high priestess can. Um, <clears throat> she's, she's the human form of the high priestess architect. We'll put it that way. So... The two of wands, um, the, high, the, the high priestess, the queen of cups on the two of wands is like, it's really time to tap in. I feel like the direction you need to go in needs to be emotionally charged. It needs to be made with the heart. Um, far too much we've been, we um, allow ourselves to overthink things. We allow ourselves to, to um, over process and over analyze situations. Um, and we, and that's why we don't act on them. That's why we sit and wait for a sign. Oh my gosh, universe. Give, how many times have you sat there and you've been like, I just need a sign. Just give me a sign from the universe of what direction I'm supposed to go in. Like, you know, just, I just want something to happen. I just want some kind of forward movement. Make your own forward movement. Make your own sign happen. It's not always the universe needing, sometimes when the universe doesn't give you signs, it's a sign to make your own sign. Let's let that settle in. If you don't know what decision you need to make and you need to trust your intuition, what do you do? You get quiet. You go inward. You go on that journey that the hermit wants you to go on. You allow yourself to trust what's going on within you and not necessarily what's happening in the outside world. We go back to the five of swords and the, and the moon card here right? This is all about being honest and authentic to yourself. And regardless of what the outside world says to you or communicates to you, and it doesn't like what you're doing, do it anyways. Because you're, if you're being true to yourself, you're going the right direction. If you are living your authentic truth, you are going the right direction, regardless of what other, other people think and say. So let's see what the hermit is. Oh, wow. I love when this happens. <laughs> so the Eight of Pentacles, which is the sun in Virgo. It represents the sun in Virgo. Thank you very much. 
A um, lot of earth energy here. And then we have, um, and it's on the hermit. So taking the much needed steps forward. Really, really analyzing the situation. Really, really, and, and not doing it in a mindset, you know, because yes, Virgos are ruled by Mercury and we get up in our heads and we sit there. But being the hermit, being a true evolved hermit does not mean that you're just sitting and binge watching Netflix and eating ice cream or, or whatever, right? What it means is you're going inward and you're really evaluating with a, a heart and mind balance on what direction you need to go in. And I feel like a lot of you are recognizing that after you, because I feel like your heart needs to lead you right now, wherever wherever you're feeling pulled to in a very heart-centered way, I feel like it's time after you make that decision, that's when the planning happens. That's when this hermit eight of pentacles energy starts to happen. Which makes sense, right? And then you can feel confident enough to be the king of wands and go in that direction. I just got really, really hot. So I got to take my blanket off just put that right there on the floor. Um, so then you can be the king of wands and push forward and be confident enough that you're making the right decision because it's you're first leading with the heart and then you're doing the planning. Sometimes the planning has to come after the heart made decision, you know? Um, and, and a lot of times we don't like to trust our heart made decisions because maybe we were hurt in the past and it broke our hearts, right? So if, if you're in a King of Wands setting and you have the Two of Swords, make sure that you aren't missing anything. I feel like with these decisions that you have to make, these ideas that you need to, to move forward with, um, don't blindfold yourself and, and say, I, but I can't do it. But it's not going to be possible. But it's not going to be this. But it's not going to... Because the energy this week is urging you to make it possible. To make all of the things that that first start here end up in your mind making that possible because the two of swords is sitting up in your mind too much you're ready to go you're feeling confident you know the direction that you're feeling pulled in or, or the, the way that you want to go and um whether that's taking a different position at work whether that's getting a new job whether that's leaving the relationship whether that's starting a new relationship whether that's going in a direction of a really i mean like i don't care what it is that's going on in your life if you're sitting there and telling and giving yourself excuses of why, like you get all super confident, you're like, yep, I'm ready to do it. I feel like there could be some regret and that might be what the five of cups is. Either you are losing out on a situation or you're having to leave people behind and it's kind of hurting you, um, but you don't want to regret not moving forward. You don't want to regret losing things in your life because you didn't take action. That's what the two of swords on the king of wands is saying. Because this woman is blindfolded and she doesn't have to, like, she's not in prison. She can easily drop those swords and take that blindfold off. The only reason why her hands are tied up right now is because she's holding swords. They're not actually tied. There's no tie on them. She could put those swords down and take the blindfold off and be confident enough to do it. But if you keep telling yourself, I don't know, I don't, I'm afraid to make a heart felt decision here. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it can be very intense when you make decisions with the heart and not with the mind. Feels like a very heart centered action oriented week, but also being really ground, like again, the material and the spiritual world are being combined here in a very big way, in a very big way. So this like Neptune, Saturn, sextile energy is huge right here. Let's see what the Five of Cups is. I'm kind of curious myself because really it's the only bad card um, because you can get caught in the Five of Cups. You can feel a little bit stuck in the Five of Cups if you allow the energy to sit with you. Oh, and we have the moon again. Here we are. I don't know. I don't know. 
That's what the moon is telling me on the Five of Cups. But I don't know. If you want to start your life moving forward, this week's a really good week. Like if you've been sitting on something and everybody's been feeling stagnant lately and not really sure what to go and where to go or what direction, it's because a lot of times we're waiting for the signs for to tell us what, what way to go, right? But um, if you get super honest with yourself and you stop lying to yourself and you stop, like I feel like the Five of Swords is all about um, making excuses. I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of this. I can't do it. I mean, if I made excuses in my life every single day, I wouldn't be doing any of this. There's a lot of reasons why I shouldn't be doing this and I could be doing other, I should be doing other things. But that's what society says. I say I should be doing this. You know, and, and that's what I mean. I want you to assert yourself and say, this is what I should be doing. And this is what I'm going to be doing in my life. And this is where I'm headed. And this is where I'm going to go. And I'm going to do it in a very heart centered way. And if people don't like it, bye. We can't live for other people anymore. You just can't. You cannot live for other people anymore. Um, and the reason why, because you'll be miserable. People are like, why, you know, and, and in all, in all fairness, yes, I live for my children. You're going to live for your children. If you're married, if you're in a relationship, there's got to be that give and take there. You always have to put yourself first though. And that's not in a selfish way. I don't mean put your, like feed yourself before you feed your kids. I mean, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not taking care of your own needs, how can you take care of other people's needs if you're not if your needs aren't met? How can you take care? How can you meet other people's needs? I mean, that's huge. And it needs to be in a heart-centered way. Yes, the material gains come. But the material gains come when you recognize your self-worth all on your own. So, bottom of the deck, we have the queen. Oh, look at that. Damn. Queen of Swords, Ace of Cups. The Hanged Man, the Five of Swords, Three of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, the Magician, the Fool. Yep, exactly what I said. Two of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. Asserting your independence and loving yourself first will give you all the gains. Queen of Swords, Ace of Cups, exactly what I said. Asserting yourself, speaking your mind, being very discerning, but loving yourself first and not in a selfish way. There's a difference between being selfish and self-care and self-worth, knowing your self-worth and knowing that you are good enough to take care of yourself. And if anybody's going to tell you that you're being selfish because you took an hour or two out of your day to breathe and relax before you took care of your family... People are going to call you selfish for that. Those people are not your friends because your friends should be building you up and saying, you need to take some time out for you. You need to rest and recharge because your family, you can't take care of your family if you're not rested, right? Um, and this goes for men too, not just the women out there. You guys need to rest and recharge too. That's not just about women. And I don't mean like going to the bar after work. I mean, if that's how you rest and recharge, then by all means, but I don't typically say that's people should go off and drink to recharge. I mean, do something that makes you feel good about you. And then the hanged man and the five of swords. The only way you can get stuck right now, the only way that anything can get stopped in your life is if you lie to yourself and tell you that you can't do it. If you keep making excuses for why you can't live your life in an authentic and true way and you can't love yourself fully, That's the only way you can get stuck right now. And seven of swords and three of pentacles. Don't feel guilty about starting new things right now. Seven of swords is also is um, the moon in Aquarius. And when people have their moon sign in Aquarius, they're really good about removing themselves emotionally from situations for self-preservational purposes. But there's often a guilt factor there. 
If you have new adventures you want to go on, if you have new things that you want to do, if you have new ideas and new innovations and this, this Aquarius energy is really making you put yourself out there and want to do things, don't feel guilty about doing that. And I'm even saying this to my, like everything I'm saying to you guys, I'm saying back to myself because there are things that I want to do and I have a guilt factor because I'm a single mom. And there's a lot that I hold, I, I have held myself, not anymore, but I've held myself back from doing a lot of things because I, for fear of how my children, you know, the growth of my children, when in fact I know that there's not a, there, there shouldn't be a fear there at all because they're very well taken care of. And they do know how I feel about them. They do know that I love them. I'm like more than life itself. So don't feel guilty about doing new things. Don't feel guilty about venturing off and doing new things. And, and that's in, in, in any way. It, does, it doesn't mean that you have to be a parent to feel guilty about that. Um, it can be that if you have to leave a job, don't feel guilty about having to leave a job. Trust me, I'm sure that job's going to be fine without you. But if you want to go off and you want to start new adventures and do new things, if you have to leave a relationship and go, start and go and do new things, if you have to um, leave a situation or an environment, that's not serving you anymore. So you can go off and do new things, right? And then we have the magician and the fool. This kind of speaks for itself. The magician is Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius energy. And the fool is Aquarius, Aries. It's all about new, creative, uh, having faith, trusting, evolving, you have all the tools, all of the manifestation tools this week to be able to, to start new adventures, to start um, new things, to, to start new relationships, to start new um, just areas of your life where you feel being like you're being pulled, right? Um, and I don't want, I mean, like I'm really big at people not holding themselves back right now. And if you're not entirely sure of what you're supposed to be doing, you can always have a reading with me or a reading with your favorite reader. It doesn't have to be with me. I always promote everybody because if you're not resonating with me, then you can resonate with somebody else for sure. I feel like there's a fear of making a decision and falling flat on your face. The two of pentacles and the ten of swords. The ten of swords for me is, is going to the worst possible case scenario. Somebody says that they're going to text you when they get somewhere and they don't and you think they're dead in a ditch on the side of the road. When in fact, they just didn't text you. Um, it's time for you to start making decisions outside of fear. And outside of the what ifs. There should never be a what if factor when it comes to making decisions to, for your soul's growth. And as long as you are being responsible. And as long as you are being authentic. And as long as you are... Um, you know, holding yourself to, to your own high standard, not everybody else's high standard, but your own high standard and your own morals and your own values and what you feel and you're doing it in a very loving way and compassionate way. I'm not saying like if your standards are being like, like, cause I know somebody's going to comment and be like, what if my standard is being an ax murderer? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is as long as you are being culpable of your actions, as long as you are being accountable and responsible and um, a good, genuinely good, loving person and following your soul's growth, the universe is right behind you, right? The star, justice, that karmic retribution, the ace of pentacles, temperance. I could probably go on and on and on and on, but I think I've already talked for an hour. I don't know. We'll see. Long story short, long story even longer. Um, allow yourself to make heart-based decisions this week and use your mind at the same time, but don't get caught up in cobwebs of excuses of why you can't, because you certainly can't. 112% you certainly can. If it has to do with a relationship that you're waiting on to make a move on, I feel like there's going to be a big shift in that this week. I feel like a lot of it has to do with owning your own self-worth and owning your own values. 
But if you're making a decision on taking a big leap of faith and having to trust the universe, I feel like you're manifesting that in a very, very real way. The only way you can get stuck this week in all of your manifestations and all of your decision makings and all of the things is making excuses why you can't. Okay, that's how you can get stuck. All right? Wow, that was a good one. I love you guys. Have a wonderful week. Um, please join me on Wednesday evening. I believe it's going to be 6 p.m. Central. If that changes, I'll make an announcement on um, my community page. I'll make it Wednesday morning if that changes. But um, I hope to see you guys there. I will be taking 10 questions. Maybe more. Depends on my energy level because I sometimes it gets really, really drained, especially that late at night. So Wednesday evening, 6 p.m., and um, I, I totally forgot about this. Tuesday evening, um, I am going to be doing a Twin Flame Talk live with Eric with Divine Conversations, one of my very best friends in the entire world. He's amazing. We're going to do, uh, it's going to be a live, so we'll be taking questions. We're going to be talking about the whole Twin Flame thing, what, it, what a real Twin Flame is, what a karmic Twin Flame is, false Twin Flame, all of that. So that's Tuesday evening. That's 6 p.m. Eastern, I believe 6 p.m. Eastern. It'll be on my channel. Last time it was on his channel. So it'll be here. Um, so join us for that. That's going to be really fun too. We always have a really, he and I always have a really great, great time. Even if you're not on the Twin Flame journey, like there's so many laughs, like a lot of laughs when we do that. So, um, and we can, we'll probably just do like a little satsang and yeah, which means you can ask questions and we'll talk and all that jazz. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful week. I will see you soon. Bye.